Welcome to the family altar. Welcome to the family altar. Welcome to the family altar. Perfect. Welcome to the family altar. Welcome to the family altar. Thank you. Welcome to the family altar. Thank you. Welcome to the family altar. Okay, our next point will be the reading of the Bible, the Word of God for the day. Matthew 27, verses 62 through 66. Matthew 27, 62 through 66. <laughs> now, children, remember that you are going to be selecting something that will remind you to the verse, one word maybe, or one phrase. So we read verse 62. Now the next day that followed the day of the preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate. Should I read it again? Yeah. We put different objects then in the morning. But do you remember what is the next day of the preparation day? Sabbath. Sabbath. So can you find something that by counting it will remind us of the Sabbath day? Praise God. Bring it. Come, Carmel. Why does that remind you of the Sabbath day? Because it's a flower. And why? Why is that? What do you do with a flower? Why is it linked to the Sabbath day? Because we put water when it's Sabbath. We put what flowers or water? Water. Water or flowers? Water and flowers. Water and flowers. Okay, that's good. Well, many of you don't know, but... One of the customs in our homes to make the Sabbath special is that we assign them to gather flowers for the table on Friday for the preparation of the Sabbath. So they look forward for Sabbath because they are going to collect flowers for Jesus. That's one thing and that's why he said that reminds him on the Sabbath day. Very good. Okay. Saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said, while he was yet alive, After three days I will rise again. Do I need? Uh -huh. All right, pick it up, please. Why does that remind you of the Sabbath, or the, the verse that we read? <coughs> Because Jesus arose the third day and folded his sheets after arising from the dead. Thank you. Next verse. Verse 64. Command therefore that the sepulchre be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away, and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead, so that the last error shall be worse than the first. Oh, you have a stone too. Why? Because that's what they sealed when they said that that deceiver was said that he was going to arise in three days. 
Thank you so much. Now verse 65 says, Pilate said unto them, Ye have a watch. Go your way. Make it as sure as ye can. Aha, uh -huh. why that one, Kayla? Because it has an eye. <laughs> yes, mommy draw an eye there so you could represent an eye. Very good, thank you so much. Next verse, 66 says, So they went and made the sepulcher sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. Very good. And why does that help you to remember the verse? Because, because Christ is the rock. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much. <clears throat> so now we will sing 1 Corinthians fifteen twenty. Ready? Okay, by now you may remember the song, so sing with us. This Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. First Corinthians, this Christ risen. First Corinthians 15, 20. We can repeat it? No. Okay, you want to hear? We can repeat it now, 1 Corinthians 15, 20. 1 Corinthians 15, 20. But now is Christ. But now is Christ. Risen from the dead. Risen from the dead. And become the first fruits. And become the first fruits. Of them that slept. Of them that slept. 1 Corinthians 15, 20. First Would you mind giving the microphone to Sister Teresa, please? It is our bitches. All right. Today, as I was walking towards my little cottage, I looked down at the ground and I saw something. And it didn't even look like it was anything I had ever seen before. Didn't look like an animal, but it it looked like something with thorns. And so I picked it up. First I touched it to see, you know, what it was. I had no idea what it was. And it was, it felt so strange. It was light. I have it here and we'll pass it around. You probably know what it is if you live around here. Um, I think it's like the outer part of a cactus. Uh, it reminds me of an exoskeleton, like something either an insect has left behind or um, a snake. But it's just real light and the thorns don't really hurt. And so I took it into the Boutte home and Carla said, oh, look at that. She said, that looks like a really good practical application to our story. And you know, it's so wonderful to be able to associate together because I had already forgotten, <laughs> uh, you know, to associate back to our lesson. And so Carla reminded me that um, this could remind us of, what do you think? Can you see the thorns? The crown of thorns that was put on Jesus' head. And they mocked him that he was the king of the Jews. 
and um, when you feel those thorns, they don't really hurt like some of the other cactuses around here that I've, I think they're cactuses, they've got quite um, spiny thorns on them. But it, it reminded me of the fact that Jesus, um, when that crown of thorns was placed on his head and it drew blood, that was painful to him, but not as painful as the fact that those that he came to save, so many of them rejected him. And so like this, it looks um, like it would hurt, but it doesn't. And it just reminded me of the fact that Jesus suffered so much for us, yet even those crown of thorns placed on his head wasn't as painful as the fact that there were sinners uh, that rejected him. So we'll pass this around so that you can feel it. We'll pass it around here. Some ha may not have touched it. But a little later, Kevin uh, came up with this little cactus and it too has thorns. I haven't actually touched them. You have to be careful with cactuses because sometimes the thorns will just come off in, in your fingers or your hands or where, wherever you touch them. So um, when you pass this around, you know, I don't know how much you want to touch it, but you can at least look at those thorns and be reminded of what Jesus suffered for us. Oh yeah, there you go. Very good. Um, there was one other uh, lesson, uh, and you might do this with your children, is kind of have them go on a, a little treasure hunt, you might say, to see if they can find things that remind them of the lesson and over we didn't bring it over because it was very interesting Carla said why don't you see if we can roll it over here and it's over um, by the palm tree by the Boutte little co uh, Boutte's little cottage uh, and it's a round stone I'm not sure exactly what they do with it but I went over to it to try to pick it up <laughs> I could hardly move it. It was so heavy. And it made me think of that heavy stone that they used to seal the tomb to, to make sure that Jesus uh, would not, or even his friends, would not steal his body. Or, or you know, that he, if he did was risen from the dead, he wouldn't be able to get out of the tomb. And how a hundred soldiers were right there also and cords wrapped around that heavy, heavy stone. So I knew that I couldn't move the stone to bring it over here to show it to you, but maybe you can take a little walk, go on a little venture nature um, walk with your children to find things that remind you, uh, even in your little area here, of Jesus and what he did for you and I. What's our character quality? <laughs> Neatness. And what did we talk about this morning? Do you remember? What was it? About the girl. The girl. So yes, we told a story. So we were talking about neatness when it came to our words, right? Were you careful with what words you chose today? Were they neat? I hope so. Well, yes. <clears throat> our story this morning, remember we talked about how Patsy and Susan were in school together and Patsy was walking along and she tripped over Susan's feet and she did not speak very kindly to her, did she? She said that she tripped her on purpose, <clears throat> but Susan, she said she didn't. Well, after that episode... Patsy said that she was going to get back at Susan for what she did to her. Well, several days later, uh, the schoolgirls were playing ball. And they were throwing the ball back and forth. And the ball, uh, one of the girls threw it. It was uh, Susan. No, it was Patsy who threw the ball. And she threw it. And you know what happened? It hit Susan in the head. 
right on the top of her head. And oh, it hurt so bad. And all the girls crowded around her and they said, are you okay? Are you okay? And she said, yes, I, I'm okay. I just, you know, it hurts, but I'll be okay. And, and some of the girls, she said, uh, the, some of the girls said, Patsy threw the ball and she did it on purpose. She said that she was going to get even with you. And Patsy cried. She said, no, I didn't do it on purpose. I didn't mean to throw the ball at you, Susan. Really honest, I didn't. And you know what Susan did? She said, it's okay, Patsy. I know you didn't do it on purpose. And at that moment, Patsy felt really guilty because she knew that Susan didn't trip her on purpose either and that she had spoken unkindly to her. And so the girls, they gave each other a hug. They forgave each other for those words that were spoken that hurt. And they went from that place, best of friends. You know, we want to be careful with the words that we choose to speak to others because they can hurt even more than falling on the ground or getting hit with a ball. Sometimes our words can be very, very painful. So we want to be careful and choose the best of words and always think the best of others. And in that way, we will be using our character quality and honoring God. I just want to share with you one verse that speaks about the importance of our words. This is found in Ephesians 4 and verse 29. It says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And that's what Susan did in our story. She used her words to edify. And by using those words to edify, she actually changed Patsy's heart. think we're ready for our nature lesson that was an inspiring story and i hope that my words can help to warm someone's heart like susan's did for patsy and we're talking about something that's warm as well today what's our nature a lesson that we learn are learning about this week how to care for the plants mm -hmm. and specifically in what kind of weather Cold weather. Yes, that's right. In cold weather. And what what's one of the tools that we use? Greenhouse. A greenhouse. Have you ever seen a greenhouse? Yes. Yes? What does it look like? L like, a, like a tent. Like a tent? And what's it usually made out of? Plastic and tubes. Mm -hmm. Plastic and tubes. Is it usually... Is a greenhouse green? Yes, inside. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Kayla, what color is the greenhouse on the outside? What is the color that it's made out of? White. It's like white. Or? Transparent. Mm, or transparent. White or transparent. And, you know, there's something interesting about greenhouses is that they're always at an angle. They're always slanted. Do you see the roof of our house behind us? That is called slanted. And it's slanted. Do you know why? Why do you suppose? What's the purpose of a greenhouse? To keep the, to keep the plants warm. Mm -hmm. So it's slanted exactly for that reason because when it's slanted, it gets the most sunlight exposure into it. The sun travels across the earth and if it's slanted, the sunlight can penetrate it for the most time of the day. And if it was just straight up and down, how much of the day would it get it? Almost hmm. nothing. Yeah. It would get it during mo only the middle of the day, but when it's slanted, it can get it from the m early morning as it comes up and then all the way to the evening time as it goes down because it allows the light to get in. And that reminds me, through our lesson, we read that 
when it's exposed it allows it allows the most exposure and what does the sun remind us of who Kevin Jesus Jesus and we are like those little plants and we need exposure to Jesus from in all the way in the morning all the way to the evening when we go to bed just like those plants and the more sunlight that they get guess what the healthier they're going to be and I was talking with someone here earlier today and we were talking about plants in Alaska and do you know something interesting about Alaska? So cold. <laughs> it. So cold. It's very cold. But did you know they can grow some very big produce in Alaska? And how do they do that if it's so cold? Well, here we are, and we're near the equator here. And that means it's so hot. Yes, and I can notice it very well. And, but it being so, it's since we're near the equa equator, do you know what time the sun wakes up here and wakes us up? What about time? I don't know. Yeah. It, it gets up usually around 6, and it goes to bed usually around 6. That's the same time. But you know, it's not like that everywhere in the world. Where in Alaska, you know, it actually changes with the season. Here we are in the middle, and most of the, it, all year round, it's always hot. But up north, it changes because of the angle at which the sun is hitting the earth. It's more directly in the summertime than in the wintertime. And that's why on the northern hemisphere, when it's summertime, it's winter time in the southern hemisphere, in the other side of the earth, because the angle is different at which the sun is hitting the earth. Okay, so why are we going into this, right? <laughs> well, when it's in the summertime, we always have the sun rise and set here at six o'clock. But it's not the same way in Alaska. In the summer, the days are very long and in the winter they're very short and what that does is it actually means that there's almost no dark time in the summer the sun will set for a few minutes and then it will rise again a few minutes later and so that means that the plants get a lot of sun exposure all day and all night. And the people there actually have to have special blinds to cover their windows or they would not get any good sleep. So, but in, in, the, in, the, win in the winter time, they even have to work in the dark. They have to use special lights to keep it bright. So, and there's actually a story of my friend who was living up where it's like that, where there's only a few hours of dark time. And she was walking and walking, and she didn't know what time it was because the sun never set. So, but finally she, she found out where she was, and she found out that she, it was like 11 o'clock at night, and it was still daylight. So that's just something interesting about the other parts of the world. But because even though it's cold in the winter time, because the sun shines for so long and they use greenhouses to keep the plants warm and they have so much sunlight, they can grow very big produce. So that reminds us that as we behold the sun of righteousness, if we behold him so long, all day, all night, if he is our meditation in the morning or the evening, the little seeds of faith in our heart will sprout and grow and produce much fruit, very big. So let's remember that. Even though we are, the sun rises and sets and we have wonderful tropical fruit here, other parts of the world have special things about them too that we can learn lessons from. Thank you, Katie. Yes, I mean, gracias. Now for the review, I'm going to ask you a few questions, a little different from the morning, because when we have the worship, we can change the, west, the questions. Just an example of what we can do. Now, 
What kind of plant did Sister Teresa found today? Find today. Cactus, definitely. Next question. What does the plant growing, the seed growing, resemble or make you remember in the story that we read about Jesus in the Bible this day? The growing of a seed, when you plant the seed and it grows and you see a plant coming out from the seed in the ground. What does that resemble or, or make you remember about the story of the Bible that we read? That Jesus arose from the dead. A what? That Jesus arose from the dead. That he risen from the dead. Okay. Next question. Why do we have thorns in the plants today? Because of, because of the sin. Because of the sin. Very good. Thank you so much. I found a text and I will invite you to open the Word of God in the book of Job. Chapter 41, verse 24. Job 41, 24. Can you repeat it after me, please? His heart, His heart. His heart. is as firm, is as, is firm. As, firm. As, a stone. As, as a stone. As a stone. Yay. 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 As hard. As hard. As hard. As a piece, as a, as piece, a piece of the nether millstone. Of, of the nether millstone. millstone. Okay. His heart is as firm as a stone. Kevin, you have a stone and we have some stones here on the front. When it says his heart is firm as a stone, is different than thinking his heart is hardened as a stone right can you take two stones Kayla please one for you one for your little brother so what would it mean okay what would it mean his heart is as firm as a stone what do you think it might teach us his heart is firm as a stone because he has faith. Okay. And he has hope. Okay, and you can I don't understand the question. <laughs> Very good. Let me explain a little bit more. If they say your heart is firm as a stone, is it firm? Can you break it in half? No. No? So what about, Kevin, if somebody comes and say, come, come, uh, your daddy and your mommy are not looking, so come and let's, let's go out somewhere. What are you going to say? No. Ah, so is your heart going to be firm as a stone and say no? Or you're going to say, yeah, yeah, let's go. Like a firm as a stone. Now, do you understand the question now? So you're going to be firm for the principles of God. Just like our bones are principles and they're hard, right? It's hard to break a bone, although some people can have that accident. But in our decisions for the Lord, in doing good every day over and over, we have to ask, the rock of ages, Jesus, to help us to be firm and not undecisive. And well, probably this time, you know, like Pilate, like we studied last week, that he was, well, I can release Jesus. Well, probably not. And waving, wavering in his decision. The verse is inviting us to be firm as a 
stone, having a firm heart. Now, did any family uh, do the exercise of writing the things that you want to roll out of your hearts? Any of the families participated and you might want to share? How many of you wrote something on your stones? Anybody? Okay, if you didn't do it, we'll give you another chance. Probably tonight you may have some time to write on them or even early in the morning before coming for worship. If you lost your stone, well, that's a good moment for going on a quick nature walk and find a round stone and write the things, ask your children, what do you think you want to get rid of in your stony heart? And something interesting also that we found in Job 17.13. Job 17.13. I invite you to open the Word of God. Job 17.13. And we will read it and repeat it. Job 17.13. Job 17.13. The grave is mine house. The grave is mine house. I have made my bed. I have made my bed in the darkness. In the darkness. Job 17:13. Job 17:13. Do you know who is it talking about in that text? The grave is mine house. Jesus. Jesus. And remember you said that the greenhouse looks like a grave. So the grave is mine house. I have made my bed. Where is the sheet, Kevin? I have made my bed in the darkness. So even when Jesus resurrected, it was early in the morning, right? Early in the morning, he made his bed. So that's a good character quality. Was Jesus neat? Yes. Was he clean? Yes. He did not leave his sheet just, you know, all crunched up and like in a ball quickly and left it there because he said, oh, I have to go to my father. Let me just quickly go. Oh, I didn't have time this morning to make my bed. He took the time to fold it and have it neatly arranged. And then he went to his father. So that's a lesson to us. Waking up early, doing our chores. And I'm sure he did it happily. I don't think that he said, Oh, I have to make my bed before I go to my father. Right? No, he did it so happily. So joyfully. And he, do you think he was so happy to go to see his father in heaven? Yes. I, I guess he could hardly wait, but that's a beautiful lesson for us to remember. From the verse that you just read, I was pondering on the word nether millstone. And I look in the dictionary, but even though the dictionary gave me the definition, I didn't get it. Do you know any, anything about the nether stone, the nether millstone? Anybody knows? Would you mind coming to say it in the microphone for us? The mill has two stones. One is in the top, one is in the bottom. Ah, okay. I think like in my country they call it molcajete and I have seen it. Something similar here in the Philippines. It looks like a stone, like a bowl but made of stone. And with another one, can you be so kind to give me that? They pound, you know, like the cassava or garlic or corn you know like like that too so I guess it says a piece of the nether millstone because it has to be a hard stone yes. to be able to smash your food like the um, tofu grinder yes the machine to make tofu the one that you saw with uh, Cuyanes in Valer, right? 
Yes, that's right. When I read the definition on the phone, it was saying that it was like the lower stone. So that's why I couldn't see it. But as he said it now, the nether part will be the stone that is the hardest. Because it's the one that receives the pounding effect, the, the weight, most of the, so like it's the bottom one. Like how they do here, they pound the palai. Yes. But it's in wood, but mm -hmm. this one is in stone, mm -hmm. right? Okay, very good. Okay, we repeat now John 15, 13. John, John 15, 13. 13. Greater love. Greater love. Had no man than this. Had no, no man than this. That a man. That a man. Lay down his life. Lay down his life. For his friends. For his friends. <coughs> John 15, 13. John 15, 13. 13. Now we will sing it. Greater love Greater love has no man than this Greater love has no man than this That a man lay down his life for him Fifteen, thirteen, greater love. Now we repeat John three sixteen. I guess we don't have to repeat it after me, but all together, John three sixteen. John three sixteen. For, For God, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Let's sing it. Remember Jesus and his resurrection as we sing. For God so loved the world that he gave And son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish for Finish by singing Psalm 95 6 and gather together to pray. Oh, come, let us worship and bow Oh! 
Heavenly Father, we have come together as families knowing that you have hope for us and that we can have your guidance and your help to guide our children, your children really, Lord, in your path. We have done one more day in this seminar and we thank you and we praise you for your help. Lord, please continue with us as we go to rest that we can keep thinking on the resurrection of Jesus. That we may take this kind of meeting as a resurrection for our families. That we may come a peculiar people, a holy nation. And that we may glorify your name before the whole universe and the angels. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.